hello hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel uh it's oscar again or you can call me kibe uh join me today in this uh segment uh to just say ho oh, welcome to my youtube channel i know it's been a minute since we get to talk and i promised last time i was gonna talk about different types of visa uh, that are are available to come to united states and I, I will talk about them now and i will uh, elaborate point by point what they are needed and most requirements so uh, for you to come to united states uh, there are several uh, types of visa categories you need to know and uh, among these visas the we have b1 b2 the one i'm gonna talk about today uh we have student visa we have um K k1 visa we have j1 and then we have b1 b2 and also like i've said we have uh, uh b4 professional runners so I know most of my friends have been asking me, Oscar, hey, would you mind inviting, would you mind uh, sponsoring me, among many other questions that I've never had a chance to respond to you. But I, 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 as time goes, I will I will give you the details of it and you will understand why maybe I have not had your time. However much, I wish I would sponsor someone, I would, I would invite someone uh, who is not my relative. Um, but uh let, let's go together but um so w w what is b1 b2 visa this is the frequent questions people ask i, I need a visit visa so what is it a visit visa this is um type of visa that allows you to come to united states it's a kind of document to and now allow you to enter united states and it is electronically uh linked to your passport and before you even think about b1 b2 visa or a visit um you should check on your criteria or eligibility what are you what, what, what is your intentions to be in the united states what do you want in the united states uh, among many other things see i i would love you you can do your research and then another thing uh, you're gonna do is um <clears throat> there are things you need to have in your fingertips at the moment and i'm gonna tell you uh the first thing is you must have your valid passport uh, which is valid for the six months uh we have to have a digital uh photograph uh you can check yourself the following requirements i know you can go online google those requirements and you can see and then think you can forget to have while looking for b1 b2 visa is your travel itinerary you need to have uh you have made your uh travel arrangement you need to have your flight which is a two-way you don't you don't come here as a one-way you you have to come here as a uh, uh two-way type of a flight uh if you have had any visit in the United States for the last five years, you must provide that at the port of entry, uh, at the AMPC, and then uh, you're good to go. Um, so people are asking, hey, what are the processes? The first thing you have to know is uh, depending on the park look of. Uh, visa interview right now in different countries uh it depends on 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 the agents like i i mean if you are coming here for a medical purpose if you are coming here for contracts it depends with your sponsor and then uh if you can uh, adjust it like you can request for an expedite but it depends again with a backlog so how do you do all this what you know what you need to know there are several steps that you need to know about applying b1 b2 visa and the first thing is you have to fill a form called the ds160 it's online and it's very simple you can do that by yourself 
you don't need any put you don't need uh you don't need to pay money to apply for ds160 you only need your passport and yourself and your email and it's a very issue i think it 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 takes uh less than 30 minutes uh and this is a form you always file before you schedule for your interview because at the end you will have to pay a fee and that is the second step where you need to pay uh the fee i don't know how much at the moment but the current uh rate and exchange rate depending um on the country and the where you are from and consulate i think it's around 185 dollars depending on your personal case uh and these are paid before application or before your interview and you have to keep the receipt you have to keep the receipt because you will take it with you during the interview uh keep keep, keep make sure you, you you have everything and then after you've done that you have to go for your interview this is where i always tell people uh schedule after 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 scheduling for your interview you have to prepare very well for your interview because this is where you go and meet a counselor face to face you need to answer the questions that you fell fill in that ds160 out all by your craft called data that uh you need um to 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 share with them um so if you have done that you need to take with you the letter that describes the purpose of your trip to united states and then proof of sustenance once in years that's our uh, finance or maybe bank statement and make sure you have adequate money uh so that they can prove make sure it's in on your account uh and then there's something that i always tell people like when you go to embassy you must show a strong evidence and that you will get back this is a choice you 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 must prove that you're gonna uh, travel back to your home country and these things uh, include uh, uh, maybe if you have a family if you have a job if you have um employed to government please provide them you must also uh, provide that invitation letter from your friend or it's an optional thing but it's very important you have it and then you provide your uh, criminal record if you have one and if you don't have one it's i don't know but i never took one to uh, but i know nowadays things have changed uh let me also tell you if you have had um a visit to united states you must uh print all those uh paperwork that you had previously visit us uh if you had a diploma or transcript if you're a student provider uh, a letter from your employer a pay slip those are just things you can hold on that things to pro to promote your um you know acceptance or your chances of getting and then if you have a medical doctor maybe you're going for a medical treatment provide that and once you've had all those things uh make sure you you answer the questions uh very well make sure you be specific those people don't answer uh, ask a question directly you need to answer specific questions don't be vague don't don't be general uh, i call it you don't you don't just explain yourself they they don't take that they believe uh when you are answering questions you need to answer questions according to the way they have asked you so be prepared make sure you read all those things you've uh, attached in your ds160 because most of those questions uh comes from your ds160 and uh and you're good to go if you have your financial capability very well if you have your if you have your um, ds160 forms very well if you have your 
documentation put together that is convincing, you have no problem with with at the embassy. So friends, uh, that's a little bit about uh, B1, B2 visa, uh, like I said, and I'll get back into this question. Uh, people asking me, hey Oscar, will you invite me? Will you support me? Will you? I wish, like I say, I wish I would do that. I wish I would support anybody. I wish I would invite anybody. But here's a problem you need to understand. Uh, before you've had your results to come to the US, uh, you must have a plan. You, you have to have done your research very well. To be honest, for someone to invite you like being a student, it's going to be very hard for me to do that. And I, I'm not just saying because I, I, I am too mean. I know often people think we are too mean to invite somebody, but we, we have policies here, you know. We have to uh, adhere with uh, American uh, rules and regulations. We, we cannot bend rules the way it is because someone who is a student cannot invite you because if he or she lives in school, where can he host you? Those, uh, that's the first thing. You need to have an host, you need to have a place to stay, uh, and somebody to take care of you because uh, having B1, B2 visa is not an easy thing. You cannot just uh, come and walk directly. You know, people have misconception that when you get B1, B2 visa, everything going to be just small. No, it's a walk in a park. Uh, so remember that B1, B2 visa is totally for visit. It's for temporary purposes. You, you're not allowed to stay here for more than six months. Huh? And if you're not going to be staying here for more than six months, what are you going to do? If you don't have money, who is going to host you? Because if, you, if you're not able to drive, you're not able to secure um, a apartment or um, an hotel, it's going to be hard for you to maintain that uh, visit visa. So th those are a uh, 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 tips that I just want to share why we don't really get back to people because there's a lot of things you people don't understand it's not just being here it's about how you stay here and before I I finish my segment I was just gonna tell people who who are planning to travel that before you travel, make sure you inform, you, you inform the person who is hosting you or your shareholder. Because at times, um, I've seen situations where people don't uh, update or don't share their travel arrangements with, their pe with, with those who invited them and the uh, stakeholders. Uh, they may have a problem because when you get at the point of entry, they will ask you, uh, does your sponsor know you travel? If you've not informed him or her, it's gonna, gonna be hard for you to convince those in, uh, officers. And it's very tough at, a, at some point, especially a place like Chicago. Chicago is really hard to, I've had several people being told to go back home fully entirely so that uh, they f they have to go and figure out their traveling and then again. So inform those people, make sure you know their details, make sure you have their address, make sure you have their apartment number, uh, know where they live, know which state they live, know what street they live, know what if it's house or apartment, not all those details at your fingertips because uh, majority of the questions asked at embassy, uh, it happens they might ask you at the part of it. Because like me, when I was coming from Kenya, I used B1, B2 visa. <clears throat> and when I got first into uh, Frankfurt, I heard the American officers asking me a lot of questions. Why am I going there? And, and a lot of things. I was all like 
10 minutes and then they were convinced that out of the person who invited me uh, upon uh, getting back to Houston, Texas the officer in charge of immigration asked me hey well, what's the reason for you coming to US and I was coming here as a professional runner but I had decided that I was going to change my visa, I was going to fly to Mexico and change my visa. So I showed them my paperwork and I told them where I was supposed to be running, what race, what date, what time. I explained to him and he let me go. Um, my last race was supposed to be on December uh, 2nd and uh, they gave me to stay here until February 3rd. So it was something, you know, I was confident about my race. But um, my story, I, I decided to change into student visa because it has wide and variety of advantages that I, I, I would suggest that for those people who are looking for a visa, I would recommend if you want to stay peacefully in US, go for student visa because it has no problems you can get social security you can get a driver's license you can still work 20 hours in a week in school and you can still you know do a lot of other things but uh, contrary to b1 b2 visa if you don't have anybody who is gonna mm, gonna host you it's going to be hard if you have somebody who is not going to drive you around, it's going to be hard. If you don't have a place basically to stay, let's say that it's totally hard. And if you have your finances, that's going to be easy for you. And the only way you can get here through B1 visa is if you are, a, if you are um, an athlete, you can apply. If you want to come here for a pleasure, uh, you can do that. You can even come here for conference. Uh, you can look, Google, find so many conferences uh, out in US. You can chip in, uh, ask them to facilitate you with, with paperwork and uh, you pay a little fee and then you present at the uh, consulate and you may try your luck. Uh, may, maybe someone who is coming here for a business, for treatment, that's the most convenient type of uh, visa they offer to those people. So folks, um, like I said, if you really value having peace in US, go for student visa. And if you can get an agency that will file for your work, that's well and good. And uh, if you have someone to marry, a friend, fiance, try your luck and all that's it. Uh, so thank you folks for watching, keep on watching. I'll really appreciate, keep on sharing, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have a comment, if you have a question, if you have a question, let me know. I'll just um, respond and I hope you have a good time and make a pleasure. Bye bye.